Hello and welcome to a video on how rockets works. We're going to talk about how rockets work. Okay, so the, the thing with rockets, first of all, it's important to understand why people care about rockets in the first place. And rockets are great for things like uh, scientific discovery, uh, for doing space exploration. Uh, in fact, when you look at the space shuttle, the space shuttle had a couple of rockets on its side in order to be able to launch itself uh, into uh, into space. Uh, and, and rockets have all sorts of wonderful applications. And one really neat thing about rockets is that uh, both big rockets and small rockets actually rely on the same uh, core underlying principles uh, for how they actually you know, get into the air. How do they actually escape Earth's gravity to the point where they can be launched into space? Now, the key to understanding um, rockets is, is really understanding what are, what, what are called Newton's three laws of motion. That actually is uh, Isaac Newton who was a famous uh, physicist, he postulated these three laws of motion. So he's got three uh, laws of motion. And the one that I think is probably the most relevant uh, in terms of understanding how rockets work is, is Newton's uh, third law. And the way his third law basically, what, what Newton's third law basically states is that uh, it's called the action-reaction law. And it basically says that for um, third law says that for every uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction so for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction So let's see what this means. When you think about it, let's say you had a, a balloon. Uh, imagine a balloon, and, and you uh, you fill it up with some air. Uh, what happens if you let the balloon go? And you'll see you're holding it with your hands, and you let the balloon go. What's going to happen is the balloon's going to fly off in some, some crazy direction because the air is going to be coming out of the balloon in one direction, and that's going to cause an opposite reaction to take place uh, in, in the other direction. That, that's the way that balloons actually work. Um, similarly, if you've ever been... Uh, inside of a uh, any kind of a uh, a wagon, let's say you got a wagon with wheels, and if you've been in the wagon, there's you in the wagon. If you try to jump off of a wagon, let's say you try to jump off uh, in in this direction, what's going to happen to the wagon? Typically, if you try to jump off a wagon, the wagon will go in the opposite direction. Again, it's an example of of Newton's third law of of there being an opposite reaction for for every action. Uh, along similar lines, let's say you're sitting in a boat. Um, so let's say you're on a boat, um, and let me uh, give a better color for that boat. Let's, uh, let's pick blue. So let's say uh, you're in a boat. Ah, that didn't really work. Let me try that again. Let's see if I can get a blue boat here. There you go. That should work. So let's say you are on a a blue boat, and uh, in the blue water. And here you are standing in the boat. Again, if you try to jump off the boat, let's say you try to jump off uh, the boat in this direction, it's very hard to step off a boat um, if no one's holding it because the boat will kind of go off in the other direction. So if you're trying to get from the boat back onto land, uh, it's really tricky to do. Now, how does this apply to rockets? Well, again, when you think about what's going on with rockets, it's basically uh, rockets have a bunch of fuel inside of them. And, and these fuel uh, or gas, I mean, these are things, typically things called propellants. So when you look at a typical rocket, and let's uh, let's kind of draw a, uh, a little rocket here. Um, so rockets have uh, inside of the rocket. There's something called a propellant. So there's something called a propellant, and a propellant might be a gas or just anything that that might be um, coming out of the rocket. So what typically happens at rockets is that uh, there's a fire, um, let's say somewhere. It's a heat source, and uh, that heat source basically causes the uh, the molecules of the propellant to heat up and um, that in turn uh, creates pressure and the propellant basically comes out of the rocket in one direction and when that happens uh, that in turn uh, causes the rocket to fly off in the other direction. So really uh, Newton's third law is, is the heart of, of what causes uh, rockets to to propel themselves um, out of uh, you know out of our uh, uh, out of our, our out of the ground and really off the launch pad. Now, um, 
the other laws that are relevant uh, to rocket motion, I think like I said all three of Newton's laws are relevant in some degree to, to, to rocket motion. Uh, the other law that's relevant is something called uh, Newton's first law. So, oops. So Newton's first law. And Newton's first law uh, is actually also known as the law of inertia. In fact, um, it's, it's often referred to as Galileo's law of inertia. That's actually Galileo. And Galileo was another famous uh, scientist. And Galileo actually um, uh, was alive uh, actually just before Newton. In fact, uh, Newton was born uh, just after Galileo died. Uh, and Galileo had this, this, uh, this notion of what he actually made this observation of, of, of this concept called inertia. And uh, Newton basically postulated uh, and, and talked about inertia in his first law. And really what, what Newton's first law says is that um, objects at rest uh, tend to stay at rest, and objects in motion uh, tend to remain in motion unless they are acted upon by a non-balanced force. So objects at rest uh, remain at rest. And um, objects in motion objects in motion uh, remain in motion remain in motion now it's in a straight line it's the official law oops sorry about that I'm getting used to the software it's kind of weird to use remain in motion um, and remain in motion in a straight line unless acted upon by a or by an unbalanced force. An unbalanced force. And again, this is this is something you might think of. Let's say you are, I don't know, um, you know, playing uh, a game like soccer, and you think about it, you know, soccer, you might have a, a ball on a field, and uh, you know what happens if uh, if the ball is sitting on the field? Well, nothing. The ball is just going to kind of stay there. Now, if somebody comes along and uh, you know kicks the ball with their foot. Um, and they uh, kick it really hard, the ball is no longer going to stay at rest. In other words, it, it's, an, it's an item that was at rest before um, in its natural state. When you kicked it, it was no longer at rest. Um, so you, you, you um, acted upon it with an unbalanced force. And, and the ball is going to continue to move uh, until um, it, it, it is eventually forced to stop through other forces like friction or through air resistance or through gravity and some, and some combination thereof. Um, so uh, you know, in, in Newton's laws, I mean, it, it's one way. The one way you can think about them is when you think about them in, in areas where, where you're in perfect vacuum or when you're in space, uh, objects will kind of keep going if there's nothing there to stop them. Uh, and likewise, if an object's at rest, it's going to stay at rest. Now, for for rockets, you know, again, where this comes into play is that a rocket has to be able to clear the Earth's atmosphere, and and, and really, what has to happen is that the amount of of um, uh, uh, the amount of force you need to exert uh, has to be enough so that you can actually clear Earth's atmosphere. You can get off the launch pad in the first place because a rocket, and typical rockets, are going to have a lot of inertia. They're going to have a lot of mass, and that mass is going to kind of keep them grounded. And you have to really uh, expend a lot of effort uh, to get them off the ground, so to speak. Okay. Um, and, and really, uh, w when you think about uh, what happens to the rocket, and rockets really do need a lot of a lot of um, uh, a lot of effort to get off the ground, and in fact, you know, typical rockets have to travel at, at, at pretty remarkable speeds just to be able to uh, to clear the Earth. And so, uh, in fact, um, let me give you some interesting numbers here. So, uh, a rocket, in order for a rocket to be able to clear the Earth, it has to actually travel 11.186 kilometers per second. And if you're not used to that, you can, you can think of this as it's actually about six. Point nine five um, miles per second. 
uh, which, which is also, if you want to translate this to hours, some people usually think about hours, that's actually 40,270 kilometers per hour, or um, you can think of it as 25,023 miles per hour. Okay, that's how fast a rocket has to travel. Okay, speed required, or velocity, or speed required to actually clear the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so velocity required to clear the Earth's atmosphere. Now this is not to say that the rocket won't slow down, okay? Um, the reality is what's going to happen is that as the rocket goes in the air, even it's a velocity, um, it, you know, it's going to slow down over time, but Earth's gravity won't slow it down enough to cause it to actually fall back down to Earth, okay? And so eventually, if, if you have a rocket that, that's going at this particular speed or these speeds, um, that rocket will eventually, um, you know, clear the Earth's atmosphere, it will actually travel um, to the stars. It's going to be, you know, out there in outer space. It's, it's going to be really wonderful. And in fact, uh, there are a few rockets right now that have managed to achieve that. Um, so the, the rockets like uh, Pioneers uh, 10 and 11 are, are a couple of the good examples. So there's a, a Pioneer, which is a famous rocket. Pioneer 10 and 11. Also Voyager. You can look these up online if you want. Voyager is another rocket, and Voyager is actually uh, Voyagers one and two have uh, have all uh, are clear the the Earth's atmosphere. They're journeying to the stars right now, and they're they're taking some wonderful photographs. Okay. Now there's still one more law that's relevant. Uh, one of Newton's laws is actually relevant to to rocket flight, and that law is, is Newton's second law. And I'm, I know I'm going the, these laws out of order, but I think it's a bit more intuitive to think of them in this order when you talk about about rockets in particular. So what I'll do is I'll actually I'll stop here and then I'll do a another follow-on video that, that keeps going and, and talks about Newton's second law and the rest of how rockets work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.